Good morning. This is very interesting, and I thank you for coming because this is my first Zoom conference talking about two things today. One is how to be a great coach and to introduce you to this new app that I developed. What's very curious is 166 people have signed up for this meeting, and there's only 31 at the moment, which is very interesting. <laughs> very, very curious because if this meeting was in Japan, and 166 people signed up, there would be 166 people here right now. But it's curious about ethnically what country you come from and how prompt you are on the meetings. But I thank you all very much for coming. And I will progress and try to help you understand how to be a very effective coach, a great coach. What is really coaching all about? Now, I've been teaching this Harada method for about 10 years. I have students all over the world. 90,000 people have really learned the method in Japan. I've been teaching this method, and I only realized recently that I was miss missing something really major. Really major, this is really funny because my book, I wrote a book with, with Harada about nine years ago, and the book is in now 10 languages, and it's being translated into four more languages. It'll be in Russian, it'll be in Turkish, it'll be in Hindi, and it'll be in Nepalese, um, all over the world, and this is wonderful. So I teach people the Harada method, and they get very, very excited about it. But there's, there's been a problem in these people being able to train other people to get excited about it, to teach other people about the Harada method. So something's been missing and I didn't know until recently what is missing in this art of coaching. Now, almost every athlete in the world has a coach. I'm gonna show you my slides now. And Start off at the beginning. Whoop. Nope, let me go back here. Okay, thank you. Every great athlete has a coach. I spoke last year in Columbus, Ohio. It was a wonderful opportunity for me. And I spoke to, um, about 200 CEOs were in the audience. I was brought there by the chief executive group. And um, I said this to the group, every great athlete has a coach. And I said, all of you have a coach, is that true? And I looked in the audience and yes, every CEO in that room had a coach. But the average person, the average worker in America does not have a coach. Now what's the function of a coach? The function of a coach is to help you, support you, keep you in the direction that you want to go, N not where they want to, you to go, but where you want to go. This is why I love the Harada method. It is a method where you pick a goal of what you want in this life. What do you really want? What do you want for yourself? What do you want for others? It's very important that you begin to focus more and more on others. The more you serve others, the stronger that you become. We're missing coaching in America. I have a client, I have a, actually he's an investor. It's a company in Japan and he's, he's invested in this app, taking me one year to produce this app and I'll be talking about it, this Harada Method app with you. And he's been very successful. He has 90 people in his trading company and everybody for the last six years has been doing the Harada Method every single day. All the employees do it because management pretty much makes them do it. Now, the, the goal of the Harada Method also is for people to be self-reliant. So there's a dual purpose of this company, DID. One is they want every employee to help improve the sales of the company. And two, they want every employee to be self-reliant. And how do we put the two together? Not so easy. Well, Mr. Umizawa, the president of this company, told me that in the last six years, using the Harada Method, they have doubled their sales and tripled the profit. That's amazing. 
Now, what are they doing? <laughs> I didn't, I wasn't realized that I didn't realize teaching the Harada method. What are they doing? Well, the key there is every supervisor is a coach. Every supervisor is trained how to be a coach. And I'm going to work through this with you today. We rarely do this in America, at least from what I've experienced. Maybe you look at this differently, but to me, most supervisors are there to make sure that you're in compliance. They watch you. Are you doing the job correctly? And if you're a troublemaker, you're out. Do you know what I mean? They're there to scold you, to criticize you. In Japan, the, the supervisor's role is to help develop you. And that's what I want you to think about. And that's what I want to focus with you today. The question is, do you need a coach? I don't know about you, but I need a coach. I teach people how to coach, but I need a coach. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to get somebody. I teach now a number of CEOs. I'm very lucky to get them. I have one CEO, Eric, and he's the president of a hospital here in Washington State. And... Um, and, and we're working together with the vision that his hospital is going to be the number one hospital, the best hospital in the Pacific Northwest. We all need that. We all need a very strong vision from our CEO of what our company is all about. So yes, I think everybody needs a coach. Everybody needs a coach to support them, to observe them. One of the great things about Lean that I learned from Ono, and all of us know this, Ono would say, go to the Gemba. He would make a manager stand in the middle of the factory in a circle for the whole day, just observing, just watching. All of us need somebody to watch us and observe us. I was at Hino Motors a couple of years ago, and I'm watching a supervisor, and he is videoing the worker. The worker is working on a truck, maybe five minutes tack time on that truck, and the next truck comes in. So he videos that worker about seven times. Then he takes the video into a meeting room, and together with the worker, they look at it, and they're trying to find the variances, the difference, because they want that worker to follow the standard, which is the best way that that work can be done. So the coach is observing. The supervisor should do the same thing. Mr. Harada taught me this, and, I, and if you look at the internet, you'll see it. 3% of your human mind is conscious. 97% of it is unconscious. What does that mean? Say I want to ride a bike. I never rode a bike before. I get on the bike and I fall off. I make a lot of mistakes. Learning is a process of making mistakes, and we should stop punishing people for making mistakes because that's the way that they're learning. Yes, they don't, you don't want them to blow up the company, of course, but you have to let people make mistakes. I, I published a book once called The Happiest Company to Work For. You should buy it. I mean, in that company, if you made a mistake, they gave you $6 for every mistake. But then he said, don't do it again. But he rewarded people for making mistakes. So your conscious mind is trying to ride the bicycle, falls off, and then slowly it learns and it goes into the unconscious. Now, the unconscious then is really perfect. It will give you back what you put in. If you put wonderful things in there, like riding that bike, you don't have to think anymore about riding a bike or driving a car. Subconscious, unconscious knows what to do. The only problem though, is inside that mind is habits that are not so good for you. Just look at yourself. To me, we are all prisoners of our habits. Just look at people around you. 50% of Americans, and I have to be very careful, 50% of us are obese. I was a little bit heavy. I'm lucky I have a good friend, Paul Akers. Paul Akers wrote some marvelous books. One is called Two Second Lean. I recommend you all read his book, Two Second Lean. He looked at me. He came to India. I was invited to India to a company called TDS Motor. And they, they did something very unusual. I met the chairman in Japan, and he loved my books. And he said, Norman, I want you to come to America to look at my company. Nobody ever asked me that before. They asked me to do training, teaching lean or teaching the Harada method, but never before to observe his, just to look, to look at his, 
at, at the people in this company. Well, that's what we have to learn. I want you to look at your habits. 50, oh yeah, Paul Akers looks at me and he says, Norman, you're overweight. And he said just two things. He said, Norman, give up sugar and give up wheat. Well, somehow, miraculously, I listened to Paul. Not to my crazy mind with all of these bad habits. I listened to Paul and I lost 25 pounds. And I feel so much healthier and I'm very grateful. But I say that all of us are locked in these habits. We are. I mean, if you're overweight, you know why you're overweight. You know you're drinking too much sugar. You're having too much pasta. You know what I mean? You know it, but it's very hard to break these habits. How do you break the habits? We need a coach. We all need the Harada method to help us break this habit. Harada was a genius. We are all, not only our prisoners, we are the jailers. Nobody makes us a prisoner by ourselves. Rudy was a great teacher of mine. Studied with him many, many years ago. And Rudy said, the mind is the slayer of the soul. You should be writing this down. Maybe some things will come out that'll be helpful for you. The mind is a slayer of the soul. He said, the mind is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. And you get 70,000 thoughts a day. Which thoughts do you listen to? How do you differentiate? It's an amazing challenge to recognize that you could use the mind. Just like when you want to ride a bicycle, you use the conscious mind. But the rest of the time, you're a prisoner of your habits. And I want to help you to learn what a coach does to help people break away from their habits and lead them in a whole new positive direction in their life. Are we machines? Can we really be free of those habits? Yes, we can be. So 93 to 95% of the brain activity is conscious. I mentioned about that. Consciously, we, meet, we say that we want to do something or change something, but there is a belief deep down that isn't congruent with this, then it's unlikely we will succeed. The trick is, and that's the reason I love the Harada Method, is you pick a very strong goal, a very strong goal of what you want in this life. And then Harada says you never, 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 never give up when you go to the target of that goal. So how do we change? How do, we, how do we have that unconscious mind make a shift? That's very hard because everything that you experience in life, everything is recorded in the unconscious, everything. So all of these bad habits are there. What do we do to replace those bad habits? It's very, I mean, if I say to you, give up sugar and give up wheat, how many are you going to do that? Raise your hand. Not too many. I did it because I was that in, in that magic moment. So we need another method to begin to train this unconscious mind. It's hard to get rid of those habits, but Harada figured out a way. He was brilliant. Instead of changing the habit, he came up with, he said, pick a new routine. Now, in essence, it's the same thing, but the human mind can be fooled. So he gets us to pick new routines to change those habits. And we'll show you how we do this in this method. Yes, we can change these habits. We call them routines. The question is, do you want to be different than you are? Do you want to be better than you are? I think you do. I think that's the reason you're here today. Everybody. Rudy said to me once, he said, Norman, you should only have one wish in your life. One wish, and that is a wish to grow. Every morning I meditate for at least 30 minutes. And when I sit in meditation, I go inside and I say to my higher self, I want to grow. I want to be better and better in every way every day. I want to grow. I want to learn to be better, and I want to serve you better. I want to learn how to serve other people. I want to share with you what I have learned. It's been a miracle in my life. I was the dumbest student in school. Believe me, I had such a poor memory. I still have a poor memory. I was the dumbest kid in school, but I didn't give up. I just continue to grow, continue to grow, and a miracle. I only read three books before I graduated high school, and I ended up publishing close to 300, and I've written about 10. It's a miracle. It's, it's not to listen to your mind, but to set inside you something that you really want in life and to go after it. Go after it. And you can attain it, whatever it is. You can attain it. I was in Japan just a few weeks ago, and I went to an incense company. They sold incense. And I like incense, not for marijuana, because I don't smoke marijuana, 
But I, I meditate every morning and I like to light a little incense and thank the higher creative energy for the life it's given me. This is a new incense burner. This is brand new, by the way. It's selling for 2 million yen. 2 million yen is $20,000. Who in the world would pay $20,000 for, a, for a, new, a new object? Well, Japan has something which I like very much. Japan has something where they look at living treasures and they identify maybe 40 or 50 crafts throughout the country. And then they have judges to, to look at the work and they pick one person in each craft and they say, you are a living master. When you're a living master, you can get $20,000 for your product, even though it's brand new. People sincerely will pay for value. And I want all of you to begin to focus on that. We, we use the term value adding in the lean arena, but we don't understand fully what do we mean by value. What do we mean by value? Value, it's the quality. Value, it's the way something looks. It's the way it tastes, the way it smells, the way it feels. Rudy once said to me, Norman, a great master, when he's working on something, his energy, his experience is in the piece that he builds. And when you are aware, simply aware, and you pick it up, you can feel that energy. And that energy will begin to transform your life. In the Orient, they build lots of statues, lots of statues of the Buddha as an example. Uh, in India, it's Krishna, it's, it's Shiva, it's all kinds of iconology that they, that they build statues in. And it takes a great master, a whole, maybe a whole lifetime, to be able to create a really wonderful document, a wonderful statue. And that statue has the energy of the living master that permeates into your life. That's the real essence of museums, museums of really what it should be about. Toyota, by the way, has come up with something recently new that I want you to consider about. Consider they identify who is a master at Toyota. So somebody who knows how to polish, somebody who knows how to examine or, or inspect the paint on the Lexus, that top person is now called master. I want you to think about this, that you encourage everybody that works with you and yourself to become a great master at something. Germany has a wonderful apprentice system. I know I'm scattered, but I hopefully I'll stay all together. Germany has a wonderful system where a young person goes to a master and they join that master maybe for six years. And the master looks at them and it says, you know, I'm not gonna teach you anything. No, nothing. You're here to learn. And the way you're gonna learn, you're gonna steal from me. You're gonna copy from me. It's funny because I was such a poor student one of the only ways I could get through is I had a copy. Well, one day in the ninth grade, I had a little sheet of paper and I did my homework because my memory is so bad. And I wrote down all the answers on the sheet of paper and I put it in my pocket. I thought it was a good idea. Gary taught it to me. So I take the test. I know the answer, but I can't remember. So I look at the little sheet of paper here and I pull it out and look at it. And a second later, the teacher is there. I mean, my timing was perfect. She looked down at me, grabbed the sheet of paper, and what do you think? She said, Norman, you are a cheater. And she told every teacher at school, it was the worst year of my life, it was the ninth grade, Norman was a cheater. They all hated me. All teachers hate cheaters. But who was I cheating? The school system cheated me. How do you go through high school without a skill? It's amazing how mixed up. If I copy somebody else and I could apply it, it's wonderful. Look what Japan did. They copied us 100%. They used to come over here with their cameras, right? And, and you let them into the plants. And they go over to you, the plant manager, and they say, can I take your picture? They all came with cameras. And you would stand in front of the machine, and then they would say, could you move over just a little bit, just a little bit? They didn't want you. They wanted the machine behind you. And they replicated it. And of course, China has done the same. Copying is wonderful. But the goal is we all want to attain to be a master. I want you to think about it. I want you to focus on being a master. I got this recently from a great genius. 
This man is called Kazuo Inomori. Inomori was the, the chairman of Kyocera, a highly successful ceramic company in Japan, the world's greatest ceramic company. That company has been so successful for the last 50 years, never lost any money. One year they made something like a 50% profit. He was so successful that the Japanese, the Japanese government went to him and said, look, Japan Airlines just went bankrupt. You have to help. I want you to come in and become the chairman and help. And he did. He came in two years later. They made $800 million. They went from bankruptcy to making 800. What did they do? The first thing he did, of course, he cut the size of the company. That was unfortunate, but he had to do it. The next thing he did is he taught them his philosophy. And I recommend all of you go to Kyocera, go, go to Kyocera's website, look up Inomori, and study his philosophy. It's very powerful. It's what every company in America have, is a strong philosophy. The first thing, part of his philosophy, the first thing he said, the company has to be good for people. That's the first thing. My company has to be good for people. They have to be happy to come to work. They have to be excited come, when they come to work. The second thing, we gotta make great products. We, the second thing is we have to have great services. The third thing, we'll make profit. But profit is not the goal. It's the result of having a great company. And then he went to everyone in the company, thousands of people, and I want you all to do this. I want you to take your attitude. Right now, what's your attitude at work? And I want you to give yourself a score of one to 100. Write it down. Are you 100%? Are you, you feel great at work, 50%? Write down that score. Then I want you to multiply it times your effort. Are you giving 100% effort towards your work? I'm trying to give 100% effort in this workshop right now. And I'm 86, I'm gonna be 87 in a few weeks. It's a miracle. I want you to rate yourself on effort. This is just for you, for nobody else. Rate yourself on effort from one to 100. Then on ability, how skilled are you? Can you create something like this? How skilled are you at your work? And multiply it together and see what you get. Do you get 500,000? Inomori said, you know, my ability is maybe only 60 to 70%. But he said, boy, my effort is close to 100%, and my attitude is close to 100%, and I get a great score. This is wonderful for people to look at, and you could post the scores. Don't identify people, but just post the scores so people can see what's happening in the company. Great coaching. Observes. Now, I, ha I just got something from Harada, and I'm very happy to share it with you. If you send me an email, you'll see my email address at the last slide. Send me an email address and I'll give you all the details of this. There's a company in Japan called Rezap, R-A-Z-A-P. Also, if you want a copy of my slides, just send me an email and I'll send you a copy of the slides. This company called Rezap is very, very powerful. It's a, what they do is they help people build up their bodies. If you go to this site, you'll see what they've done. They, take, they took these people with the flabby stomachs and you look at their bodies right now. Paul Akers did that. He was 230, 240 pounds. He's probably down to 150, 160 now. And he's- his, 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 What? Your, your slides are not showing, Samed. My slides are not showing. Thank you for telling me. Everybody's sitting there and nobody says anything. Wait a second. They, they were chatting. <laughs> Okay, I didn't see that. I apologize. Boy, I'm kind of stupid today. Hold on. Hold, thank you for telling me. Wow. I mean, you're a genius. Okay. Thank you very much. Amin, Amin is really great. I'm sorry. The problem when I show the slides, I can't see the chat. So let's see what I have here. Okay. I'm going to do it differently. If I put it differently, then let's see if I can see the chat. I still can't it see works. the chat. Yeah. Hold on a second, because I want to be able to see chat at the same time. Here's chat. Let's see. Chat. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, but the slides went away again. Yeah, they'll be back now. Thank you very much. Ahmed is a genius. Ahmed, 
I don't know what time it is for you. Ahmed is in China. It's 2 a.m. 2 a.m. You're on so unusual. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you for your help. Okay. So rezap. This is a technique you'll see to build up your body. And it forces the student to report every single day on their progress. I love this. It forces the student every day to, to report on their progress. The coach in this instance is one in one. The coach watches you. The coach has a definite standard. The coach knows what you should look like. The co coach knows the exercise routines that you should be doing and then encourages you and doesn't criticize you. Criticizing criticism is such a bad tool to use in management. You should support people. You should praise, Harada says you should praise five people every single day. The next technique, and this I teach in the Harada method, is everybody fills out these five forms and then the coach reinforces you with a red pen. And he says, this is good, this is good. And, if the, if, and then puts a comment in red. We want teams to work together. When you learn this method, we want teams, your team, to take responsibility with you. I haven't done this correct in the past. We'll show you this too. The power of learning from great coaches and their sayings. <coughs> I'll do this quickly. About 10 years ago, I had, I taught I teaching at Portland State University and um, four students asked to interview, intern with me. I didn't know what to do and I said, okay. I had this map from Nakamura and I'm very happy to send all of you a copy of this map. This map breaks, instead of having lean and looking the whole company and going after those seven weights with your 33 tools, it breaks the whole company down into 38 parts. And then it looks at each part and said, what is the world's best technique in that part? So the first one sends quality. What's the world's best technique in quality? Well, it might be Six Sigma. It might be total quality management. The next column said, who's doing it? Well, GE was very good. Motorola was very good. This is a great map. So I started to teach the, this map to my students. And I had Nakamura, my author in Japan on Skype, and he would work with us for an hour, once a week, once every other week. We came to the seventh week and we see this. It says standard manpower. It said 100% standard time improvement rate, plus 3% improvement a month. We want everybody and every process to improve 3% a month. That's an amazing goal. And then it says the technique is called day-to-day -day management by objective. And over here, it said Takashi Hirata. It also said the old can of production system. It said Takashi Hirata, and that's how I found him. And I was lucky three of the students read Japanese. My wife is Japanese. We went to Amazon in Japan, and we ordered seven copies of his book. And they taught me the, what was Hirata teaching about. I got so excited, I got on the phone, and I called Hirata through my wife, and I said to Hirata, I want to take your books and put it into English. I said, when can I meet him? And he gave me a date and I got on an airplane to meet Harada. And instead of taking an old book the way I did with Shingo and Ono, he said, I want to, I want to write a new one for you. And then I said to him something I should have said to Shingo. I never said, I should have said, I want to co-author the book. And I did, I co-authored the book. I Americanized it. One of Harada's students is Shohai Otani. I don't know if you know about him. But he decided in high school, and I'll show you what he did. He decided in high school, he wants to be the fastest pitcher in Japan. Then he decided he wanted to be a batter both, just like Babe Ruth. Nobody's done this in a hundred years but him. Following the Harada method, two and a half years later, he was the number one pick in Japan in their baseball league, number one. Three years later, the Los Angeles Angels picked him to join them. Last year was his first year. He was picked as the number one new athlete in the American League. I love it because he still does the Harada method today. He still continues today with, with his team. What is this Harada method? And why is it such a, why is it such a great um, tool to improve your coaching, to be a really great coach? 
first of all, to get yourself to be great, and then to learn how to coach other people. And it's not too many forms. It's this form is just how confident are you in yourself? This form is how you set your goal. What do you want to do? Well, 10 years ago, I wanted to be a great Harada teacher, and I filled out these forms to really teach the Harada method, and I followed it. And now my book is going to be in 12 different languages, and I teach all over the world. I have students on Zoom, just like this. I have students all over the world. I have one in Nepal. This is interesting. Nepal, one of the poorest countries in the world, and this man is great. He's now teaching the Harada Method in Nepal. He's putting the book into Nepalese. He is just wonderful. His name is Manish. And so my new, my new goal is I want to create a great app. I, wanted, I want this to be the world's best managing app. I want this app to help you manage yourself. I want you to use this app to coach other people. My wife said we should call this app the ultimate you. You should tell me what you think about that. I was going to call it the Harada method, but maybe I should change and call it the ultimate you because that's the goal. You set your goal here. You, you, you set the goal and then you come up with eight categories of how are you going to attain that goal. I want to create a great app. We'll have to learn how to market. I have to study other apps. I have to develop training courses. I have to be able to sell it. And Harada says the following. He also wants one of these categories to be working on your family so that you're always not just on work, but you're always focusing on your family and your community. And you, I put spiritual and I put health. Then I go to marketing. And in marketing, I come up with eight tasks. These are the things. I'm going very fast with you, I know. I want to come up with eight specific tasks in order, in order to attain my goal. I need a new website. I have to run Harada, Harada Workshop. I, run, I want to Zoom every single week, and I'm going to do that. This is my first time to introduce it, but every week I want to teach you this app. I want you, hopefully you'll buy the app next week from Apple, and then you'll, and in the app, I have 20 videos, very short videos to teach you each page. I have 20 instructional pages, and I have about, 19, why I have 19, I have 19 examples. But I think I still will get on Zoom every week to be able to ask questions and to able to teach you more specifically what this is all about. Okay, the important thing is in the Harada method, you have to pick a purpose and a goal. And the goal is unending. You continue to strive to your purpose. What's your ultimate objective in life? What's and this is missing. Every great Japanese company, I've been in Japan 92 times, and every Japanese company has a very strong vision. The, the, I remember President Kennedy said, we're going to put a person on the moon. Nine years later, we did it. That's the main role of a CEO, is to get everybody excited, not just to focus on profits. Just, and, and the chairman of Toyota said, I want to produce a car that's gonna go from New York City to Los Angeles on one tank of gasoline, and they're gonna get there because we're getting into the electric vehicle. It's amazing the power of a vision. Well, you need a vision for yourself. What do you really want in this life? And then how do you check the velocity? How do you, how do you check yourself as we go through? Okay, one of the first things we do is I have you decide your wants and your purposes. And I want you to look at what you want. Well, I want to double my income. I don't care what you want. It's your wish. But I, I want you to do it tangibly and intangibly. If you want to copy this video, you just let me know and I'll give you the site where you can get a copy of the video because I'm talking very fast. I want you to focus on emotionally also for yourself. I want you to focus on other people. I want you to focus on society, on your family, on your company. In a tangible way, what could you do to serve them? And I want you to first really serve emotionally what your family needs. You know, they want you, what do you want for them? You want them to be happy. You want them to be peaceful, etc. This is a very powerful process. This is a student of mine in India. This is Dorgish. And Dorgish filled this out, what I just said. He wanted to help a thousand people in the Harada method in the next five years. He wanted to be admired as an excellent coach. 
He wanted to improve his skill in his personal finances. He wanted to become a renowned speaker. This is such a marvelous process for you to go through. Nobody's, we rarely ever did this before. I never did it before. But now if you go step by step, what you want for yourself, tangibly, intangibly, and for everybody else, it's amazing what will come out of you. The creativity that is locked inside you that you don't demand from yourself. Okay, I want you to watch this. Let's see if we can show you this. This was Justin Gatlin. This was um, two years ago in London. Justin, it's been a long Justin, career. Justin, it's been a long, a long career. career. And 12 years later, I'm going to tell you your first world You're championship. You're back here again on the top. How did you get in the blocks in this big moment with everything on the line and make this happen? I didn't think about myself. I thought about my parents in the stands. I thought about all my supporters back in the hotel, my countrymen who are watching at home, and those who counted. I didn't do it for me. All the times I've lost to Usain and, and I've gotten silver and bronzes, today I just went out there and I just did it for others who really wanted me to go out there and do it. But I know deep down inside there must be a significance that we don't understand in the fact that you came from behind and you were able to get both in his final 100 meters. You know, I couldn't see anything from lane eight. And I know at the point in time when we, the starting line, it was a, a Coleman and Usain Bolt show. Um, I know I had somewhat of an advantage out in lane eight, but also had a disadvantage because I couldn't see them. So I just ran for my life. At one point, you fell down to the track, and we saw the emotion in your eyes. Can you just explain what that meant to you with everything you've been through in your career? I dreamed about this day. I worked hard for this day. And it took for me to not be selfish and think about myself and to think about others to give me that fight. And that's what mattered the most. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. I think that's beautiful. For 10 years, he's trying to be Hussein Bolt. For 10 years, he's trying to catch him, and he couldn't do that. Let's see. How do I get, how do I get out of this? How do I get? No. Stop share. Okay. I got to go back now to share again and to get my slides. No, not doing something right here. Okay, well, we'll continue this way for a minute. These are my slides. We went through this. We went through this. This is my daily diary. And this is from my daily diary on the app. And so I meditate every morning. And I do something called Falun Dafa. I recommend this too. This is a Chinese technique, technique, and it's wonderful. So every day I schedule them in my activities. But I want to put here a task to attain my goal. So I want to review the app today. I put it here, and somewhere on the day I want to do that. This is where I schedule myself. I also review every day, did I do what I wanted to do? Did I do today what I wanted to do? And then I check. I, I click this and it turns red. Red means I did it. So when I look at it very quickly, I know what I did and what I didn't do. This is ReZap. ReZap focuses on you looking like this. And they say they can do it in two months. And the consultant only works with you two days a week. He gives you a lot of work or she gives you a lot of work and you do it. I'd recommend you look up this ReZap and learn from it how to be a great coach. The coach, of course, knows what you should be doing. He's recommending, and he's watching her carefully, observing that she is doing. You might want to also put this on video so she can see herself. This is the second technique that Harada has taught me. Is This is the, the long-term goal-setting sheet. This is where you're going to write down what you want, and you're going to evaluate your strengths and your weaknesses here also. And then the coach looks at it, and he puts a little circle or a little check mark. This is great, this is good, this is good, this is good. I like this, I like. You wanna give positive, positive, positive reinforcement. And then you give comments that you think could be helpful for your student, the person that you're coaching to get, to get better. When I was in Japan once, Harada brought me to a company called Chugai Pharmaceuticals. And a young woman got on the stage, she was a brand new worker, and also, there was another worker who's there for four years, and he was her coach. And every day, every day for at least five to ten minutes, she meets with him. 
and he reinforces her. Her goal is at the end of one year, she wants to be a great worker. Simple as that. This comes from Otani. This is Otani's 64th chart, part of the Harada method. He wanted to throw at 99 miles an hour. He now throws over 100. And he indicated what he, these are the tasks. I have to gain weight. I have to strengthen around the shoulders. I have to increase my pitching. I have to catch liner balls. I have to improve my range of motion. So he indicated everything here. Then I recommend you put a date on here when you're going to get started. Now Harada taught me something brand new that I didn't know. I want to get my, uh, her, what Otani did is he got his coach, he got his team together. Not just his coach, he got his team together. And the team took a part of this. And so one of the team members is going to help him improve his physical self. Another team member took control. Another team member took precision. And of course, Otani helped other members in his team the same way. This is really great. You want to get a great coach, but you also want to learn how to be a great coach, and you want to learn how to serve other people also very well. Another part of the rather method is the power of sayings. And I didn't even know this that well, as well as I should have, what this really means, the power of sayings. I always thought you write down sayings that you hear. No, you go study great coaches. And what did they teach? This is John Wooden, probably the best American coach in the history of athletics. For 11 years, his team was the number one basketball team in all of America, college basketball. What did he do? Well, he came up with many powerful sayings. Success comes from knowing that you did your best to become the best that you are capable of being. And you say to yourself over and over and over again every day. I was taught many years ago by someone to say better and better in every way every day. I used to say that, better and better in every way, every day. Repeat, repetition, chanting. Every religion does chanting. When I was younger, I was afraid of flying. I was afraid of heights. It was terrible because my job said, Norman, get on a plane, but I was afraid to get on that plane. Then I meet a very strange man from India, and he gives me a chant. And I chanted for one month, believe it or not. I, I chanted that chant, didn't even know what it meant. I chanted that chant for one month. All of my fears went away. My fears of flying, my fears of height, my fears of darkness all went away. It was a miracle. I'm so grateful because I've probably thrown three to four million miles in my life. I've been in Japan 92 times alone. It's amazing. I'm so grateful the fears disappeared. So I ask you to look at these great coaches. Make each day your masterpiece. Well, you talk to yourself. I'm going to make today a masterpiece. You talk to other people around you. I want you to focus on creating today a masterpiece in you. What can you do to get better? You go to Phil Jackson, another great coach on the Los Angeles Lakers. He had like a great national, I think of the, in the basketball league, like six years he had the, the top basketball team. And look at his sayings. Good teams become great ones when the members trust each other enough to surrender to me for the we. That's a great thing, because most of us are wrapped up in me, not we. You can't force your will on people. If you want them to act differently, you need to inspire them to change themselves. It's wonderful. I recommend you go out to the great coaches and you learn from them what their sayings are. Become the best you. Become a great coach. Be the best you. Be the best coach. That's your goal. Be the best you. Take down my email address, bodic at pcspress.com. Stay in touch with me. I'll send you a copy of the slides. I'll send you that map. I'll send you a copy of all the Harada forms. You can call me if you want. And you can look at my app. It should be on Apple Store next week. And you can test it for free. Now, let's see. We could stop at the moment. And you can turn your mics on. Let's see, one by one, how do we do this? And you can ask some questions. It'll be available in Android about two months. Um, only an iOS version is right now. My email address I just gave you. 
Uh, you, you did it very good. Okay. Any questions at all from the group? Put your mic on and ask some questions if you have some. Go ahead. Anybody? Hi, this is Amish. Go ahead, Amish. Uh, I actually wanted to ask, you know, how to define the desired state? Because uh, as a coach, uh, how do you know what, what should be the desired state? How to reach that? Okay, it's a great question. You know, in industry, and it's very powerful if you're involved in lean. Yeah. Because Toyota talks about standardized work. That's okay. That's what it's really about. You develop a standard and a standard for yourself. What is a standard? What is the best way to do something? Well, you observe people. You look at the master. And then you try to get as many people as possible to emulate the master. So look at an ideal. Look at someone that you'd like to be like. Okay. And then you just develop a standard and go after it. And, and then Umesh, you just practice every single day. That's okay. it. Practice every single day. And stay in touch with me. Yeah. Anybody else out there have a question? Anyone else? Let's see. I, Nick Henderson here. I do. So I, I'm a coach, uh, corporate type coach, and my wife is a coach for teachers. And I was wondering how this, the Harada method, I've looked at it before, how it would change for teachers and how it would change for in the corporate area. Okay, well, this is what we're doing. It's a great question, Nick. Harada was rated in Japan as the world's best technique in coaching. This, his method was rated number one. He had, in high school, he was at the worst high school in Osaka, the worst high school in Osaka. He was in the poorest neighborhood. And in Japan, when you were in junior high school, in order to get into high school, you had to pass a test. One, if you didn't pass it, the parents would have to pay for your high school. It wouldn't be free. If you passed the prep, if you passed it, it was free. If you were a really good athlete, then they would give you a scholarship to get to high school. Those three. So Harada said, if I can train these people, if I could find a way to advance their athletic ability, they can get a free education in high school. When he came up with this method, it took him 20 years to do it. But when he came up with the method, 12 students won 13 gold medals. That means every year for the next six years, at least two or three people won a gold medal. That's out of close to 12,000 schools. This one little school ends up with 13 gold medals. Harada became very famous. And so I recommend you, Nick, study the Harada method. Read the book. Stay in touch with me. You can know, it's up to you. I could coach you. I'm not that expensive. You can buy the app for $10, $9.99 a month. Maybe you can do it on your own. If not, a lot of people have me coach them and I charge them. And then I will certify people because I want, I'm 86, gonna be 87. I wanna get lots of people that can teach the rest of the world this app, teach the rest of the world the Harada method. So I wanna certify people. I've already certified 50 people in the world and I wanna to continue to do that. But now I can do it on Zoom. You don't have to fly here to Portland, Oregon. So how does this method relate to improvement kata? I mean, what is kata? Kata is doing it over and over again, right? Kata is repeating over and over and over again until you're doing it correctly. Well, the same thing with Harada. You never, 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 never give up. I like Harada's method too. He says, praise five people every single day. Praise, for, praise, when you go home, you praise your family. Don't look for something wrong. And I, I recommend, somebody asked me this recently. I'm married to a beautiful woman. She's brilliant. She's a doctor. And she is 100% right. No, no sharing, no 50-50. That's nonsense. She's 100% right. That's the same way you want to feel about your family. They're 100% right. And when you're at work, how can you serve people better? Brian said, looking forward to trying the app. So, okay, Brian's gone. Anyone else have a question, please? 
Anyone else have a question? Norman Federico. Federico, all the way from yes. Milan, Italy. This man is wonderful. He teaches the Harada method. And what I love about him is he bought me two scarves. These are such <laughs> great cashmere shawls. I'm wearing, I'm not wearing them this second, warm enough, but I always, every time I go outside, I'm wearing a scarf that is given me by Federico and Giorgio. They're partners in Milan and they teach the Harada method. Go ahead, Federico. Thanks, Norman. I have a question. And Giorgio and myself, a couple of years ago, had a bad experience uh, uh, because we tried to, to have a group of people uh, coaching each other. It's, it was a company group. And, uh, but some, some of them, they, they didn't like to be coached by the, the colleagues. So how can we persuade uh, people to be coached by colleagues? Okay. It, it, you know, that's a wonderful question, and that's what I'm wrestling with right now. So maybe some people can coach each other. Maybe. Okay. Maybe the supervisor should be the coach. Maybe like what Harada did, it's an older worker who has more experience. What I'm saying is, and it's part of the method, Federico, people should pick who they want for a coach. I made a mistake and I thought that one worker in my class could teach another. Well, it's good for teaching purposes, but it's not necessarily the right way. So people will pick who they want to support them. Could be their wife, could be their husband, could be a, could be a boss, could be a fellow worker. So the thing is, you have to give them the choice. I think that's what the, and it was my fault. That was my problem. Somebody, Christine. Christine, I think you were a student of mine. You want to write the Harada Method of People in Recovery? That would be wonderful, Christine. You do it and send me a copy and I'll look at it for you. I think that would be wonderful. Ryan read the book, just a comment. Thank you. Manfred said, what about handwriting effect when using an app? Well, I don't have that yet, but it's very good. It's very good, Manfred, for me to think about that. I will. The, the app is going to be continuously updated, continuously improved. So right now, you can type, but, Manfred, you can dictate. So when you use the app, you just dictate. That's almost as good as writing. It's better than writing. You just dictate, and it'll it should translate your dictation into type words. Maybe it'll be 90%. Maybe you want to go back, correct some of the spelling, but that's okay. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Ahmed, for posting on chat. Norman, here, here's yes. Manfred. Do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Manfred. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, uh, I'm teaching the, the Harald method in Germany, uh, and... Uh, I told the guys to develop their their goals uh, by handwriting because getting this connection of mind and and soul uh, better to be work harder on what you try, uh, what you formulate on on the uh, sheet of paper when you develop your goals. Uh, I thought that was something essential from the Harada method uh, when I learned it. Okay, you might be right, but hopefully the app will replace it as you type, as you dictate on the app, you get that same tactile sense when you work on the app. I hope it works. And, okay. and, and if I can, I will try to see what we can do, but it's not so easy when you go digital. I just bought something called Moleskine. Moleskine is the same idea. They came out with a very clever a notebook and they gave you a pen. You bought a pen, it cost me about $120. Was selling for 199. I got a bargain, and I write on the book in their notebook, and it digitally records on my iPhone. But I can't read it. <laughs> I can't read it. <laughs> I came up with a new technique for the iPhone. By the way, is when I put in my notes, and there are many places to put notes in. At the end of the note, you can put an X, a capital X. If you do that, it automatically goes to an X list. You see, I take lots and lots of notes, but it's hard for me to read it. 
But when it's important, I put an X in, in a circle and I go back and always read my X's that I wrote down and I put it into the app. So anything that's important, you put an X and it goes to a special list and I look at that special list and I can click on it and then post it into my daily diary. When do, when do I want to do it? Okay, let's see. Ahmed. Ahmed's one of those that I gave to test the app. The app flows better. It makes it super easier to do your long-term and 64 chart. And the daily is omnipresent. It's very easy to use. He says, I do miss handwriting and doodling. Well, I'll have to consider how do we do that. <laughs> I like that. How do we do doodling and handwriting on the app? Thank you both, Manfred and, uh, and, and Ahmed. And Ahmed, I'm going to do this again next week. And I hope that you, you here that like this. I want to do this every week. And if you like it, you can get a copy of the video. But I hope you recommend other people to attend this workshop. I want to turn everybody on to have a really great life. Thank you, Martha. Anybody else have a question before we break? Norma, I have a question for you. Giorgio, go ahead. Uh, before you said that everybody uh, can pick his coach and uh, for example you said uh, maybe the wife or also the husband can be a coach uh, um, <clears throat> maybe it happens that wife and, uh, and uh, or, or a husband doesn't know another method and how they can be a okay, good coach. That, that's true that's true that's why I recommend everybody learn the Harada method and then everybody learn, learn how to be a great coach. That's what I'm trying to do with this session. And it's a learning experience for me. Um, I'm gonna to continue to share what I learned with you. And I'm gonna, what I learned back from you, we'll keep building together. We want people to be great coaches. We want people to learn how to really support themselves and support others. We want everybody, to, we wanna create a great world because our leaders are surely not doing it. How we pick the worst leaders in the world to run our countries, I don't know. Our school systems are so bad. It's not there yet. Anton's putting my book, Harada book into Russian. I'm anxious to see it, but it'll be in English uh, on the app store next week. We're about a week away, Anton. Thank you, Ahmed. Somebody's congratulating, thanking you for introducing them to this. Um, I love Japan, by the way, Bill. Yes, I agree with you. I mean, I go to Japan. I, I, I went there a couple of a month ago and I went to the Shikigi fish market. This is an experience all of you should go to. And I love tuna. You can't get this outside of Japan, maybe in Hong Kong. But I go to the market and at the store, it was, I got there the right time because at 1130, they take a giant tuna and they carve it up in front of you. And then as they're carving it up, they said the neck is the best piece you could eat. And I said, hold that for me. And I, and I, had, the, I had the neck. It was the best experience that my mouth ever had in my life. It was so wonderful. I love strawberries. While I live in America, you can't get good strawberries, maybe just once a week. The rest of the year, you buy these strawberries. They're terrible. They taste like straw. You have to put sugars on strawberries. That's crazy. When I was in Japan last month, I went every other day and picked fresh strawberries. They were beautiful. So I recommend you all go to Japan. Okay. Let's see who's asked me questions. How do we pick a new routine as you said to change the habit? Okay, we're gonna have to work on this, Aaron, because you look at your habits. When you, when you fill out the 64 chart, you'll have an opportunity to do this because you're gonna put down things that you need to do to attain your goal. Some of these things you do every single day. That's what we mean by a routine. So I'm gonna do every single day. My routines now, I wanna do this Falun Dafa exercise every single day. So I have something called the routine check sheet. And every day I mark down on that routine check sheet, I check off, did I do it? And didn't I do it? I do it every day. Well, if I have a coach, the coach is going to look at it and he's going to pat me or she's going to pat me on the back. You did it, Norman. That's wonderful. If you didn't do it, the coach is just going to give you a little urge. No criticism, but a little suggestion. 
to do what you want to do every day. Um, let's see, should be guideline for routine. Currently, we coach leaders right from the CEO to supervisor. Who, well, that's great, Aaron. I'm glad that you're coaching people because very few people get the coaching that, that they need. Okay, thank you all very much for coming. Tell people I'm going to do this every week. You might want to come back next week. And um, Ahmed, thank you so much for staying up so late. You go back to sleep now, and I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye.